welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Maggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. In today's show, it is my real pleasure to speak with Vamsi Panala. Vamsi, you are the founder of Impact Marketing Summit and the host of the Authority Entrepreneurs Podcast. You help entrepreneurs rise out of obscurity and stand out in a crowded world. And you are on a mission to help 1,000 entrepreneurs in the next 12 months undergo this transformation that will allow them to reach and impact more lives. Vamsi, welcome. I'm uh, delighted to speak with you today. Ajit, thank you so much for uh, having me on your podcast. It's it's a pleasure and um, really looking forward to some great conversation. So am I. So am I. Vamsi, I want to start with uh, a little bit of uh, your story so we can get some uh, context. What I was uh, looking at your story was because you have a... a, a, a a corporate background in sales and marketing and uh, at some point you something didn't you didn't like something there and uh, you quit and decided to start your own business so and then some very interesting uh, turns and twists after that so if you would just uh, paint a picture for us so we can get an idea absolutely Aji. and um I would not say my story is any any close to a Christopher Nolan's movie, but it has its <laughs> own twists and turns uh, that I never expected that I should be going through. But um, in short, I I come from the corporate world, like you just uh, said, and I spent about 13 years there as a sales and marketing specialist. One of the last things that I got into um didn't really last long uh, there was a huge disconnect with the expectations on the ground reality versus what i what i was expecting it to be so i called it quits um and um didn't want to jump on another opportunity without spending a good time retrospecting what i should be doing uh, as my next step so i had two choices whether i should go for another job go for entrepreneurship which was there for almost like two two and a half years in my head at that point but the opportunities that i had in the corporate world did not let me to go and explore that world because i was happy with, with what i was doing the kind of people i was working with but when the time came i i kind of took the gap that i never had uh, in my in my entire career took a one month break uh you know kind of went back to the drawing board on what i should be doing so when i started writing out whether i should go for another role or should, should get into entrepreneurship most of my checklist was getting ticked off on the side of entrepreneurship uh-huh. for reasons i didn't had any mortgages no loans no credit cards my kid was just one year old his schooling had another couple of years down the line so everything was like the stage was set for me to go and explore the world of entrepreneurship so i took the plunge got into it but didn't really had the the start i mean i'm not even complaining about the perfect start even the the, the kind of start that i wanted i re- didn't really get that for simple reason when i look back 20 22 months um, down the lane i had no mentor no coach i didn't even know what my niche was I, i i didn't even have a clue of who i was trying to serve i was just trying to look at any opportunity that would give me the start you know i would start making money online and that i believed was uh, entrepreneurship which was absolute chaos and absolutely wrong in terms of how you approach entrepreneurship as as, as a career that you want to really get into so i jumped ships every two months i i i was chasing shiny objects like uh, you know a, a kid would ask for candy every two hours right so every every few weeks i would just go into uh, one after the other there was affiliate marketing there was funnel building there was marketing consultations there was direct market direct uh, selling product that i got into as a distributor then there was agency then I mean there was like every every other thing that I could see on the internet which throwed up an opportunity I go I went and picked up so in the process 
I spent about close to nine thousand, more than nine thousand dollars, getting into different products, courses, masterminds, whatever you may want to call. So this went on till almost fourteen months, uh, till April two thousand twenty, when we were all in the midst of the global pandemic. Uh, we were uh, the entire world was on the shutdown. Even during that, I was still chasing the shiny objects. But um, one fine evening, twenty sixth of April, I had this. um thought out of out of blue i mean I, i would not credit myself that you know this was an einstein of me who had this thought and things like that it just came out of my uh, my mind out of nowhere so i thought and and this was the point where i was talking to a lot of people who resembled exactly like me you know people who were losing jobs left right and center they they had plans of aspirations of becoming an entrepreneur but they had no one to tell what is right what is wrong where to go who they should serve what skill set can bring them money to the table and also impact lives that they really want to get into by doing this so i thought in this last 20, 14 months of chasing all these shiny objects one of the good thing that also happened in fact if i if you ask me what did all those shiny objects do to you vamshi i think there is more good than bad that happened to me apart from the money that i have spent i actually so, wanted to ask you about about this the the courses because many people i think i can certainly relate i'm over i think the shiny object syndrome now but uh, i know that i was tempted and i think many people are because they think and We all think in the beginning that the, the road of uh, entrepreneurship is something that will solve our financial problems uh, quickly, and uh, because we'll do a, a training. <laughs> so yeah, we jump on from one to another until we find out uh, maybe what we. That's my biggest takeaway. We find out what we. enjoy doing the most or we're passionate about but please tell me what was uh, your takeaway from all this <laughs> so so when 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 i uh, when i thought of that so i thought can i can i bring some of these six seven figure entrepreneurs that i got friended because i i bought their courses i got into their facebook groups i would engage with their facebook live so there was that time where i i i was on their friend list so for me it was just a message away to send them and say hey you know what i'm planning to do this virtual summit a, pl- a common platform where i can bring entrepreneurs like you who can come and share value to people like me and a lot of people who are in the market trying to understand how they can withstand a pandemic like this you know can people who are losing jobs learn from someone like you who is still doing the kind of business that you were doing pre pandemic i mean nothing changed in your business so that was essentially the thought process that i was going through so i started doing the outreach i was not expecting a lot of people to come on it because it was not just the, the 30 40 minutes of the session time that i was expecting them i was also expecting them to come prepared there's some preparation time they have to move calendars to accommodate my request and all that stuff right so i wanted to do it with like 10 15 people so i sent out my request to 83 people just to increase my probability of getting more yeses yeah. because yeah. i was always expecting no from them <clears throat> but eventually the opposite of that happened so of the 83 that i have sent 35 people 34 in fact including me 35 uh, people actually ended up um, you know coming on that summit uh, and that was one of the uh, the biggest projects that i could ever imagine myself putting uh, myself through so and it was a huge success i had uh, some of the biggest names in at least in the niche that i represent i'm not sure if you uh, know know about this uh, community called click funnels mm-hmm. um, of course so i had i had people like steve larson marley jacks gabe shilling rakbar sheik some of the biggest names that that community looks up to for the kind of work they do the kind of business they do the revenue they generate and the kind of following they have so that kind of position me as uh you know someone who was uh, unknown to a guy who was unstoppable you know from from those five, four to five months of putting together this entire summit my life just changed uh for good you know everything you know mm-hmm. that that's basically what's what's been my my story for the last 22 months of what i have been doing tell me a little bit more about the 
the the success of the summit. I mean, you say your your life changed. I suppose you mean both in terms of the connections and the knowledge, uh, the networking that you personally got from the experts that you called to speak at your summit. I suppose you also mean financially. So I take it it was a success in a sense that you were not expecting it to be. Yeah, it was not just about bringing 34 top experts on my summit. It was also about, as you may know, summit is not just a, a free lead magnet. You know, it, it has mm-hmm. tickets that you can sell. It has one-time offers that you can sell in the back end. It has okay. the order bumps that brings in the tons of revenue. So from all the aspects of what you can expect a successful virtual summit can do to your business, everything happened for me. so that and and that now kind of positioned me as someone because my journey has been followed by a lot of people i mean uh, i would not say 10000 100000 people but good 15 2500 2000 people who had who i was already getting into kind my kind of network with whatever i was doing in mm-hmm. those 14 months so people knew the kind of work that i have put in the effort that i have put in uh, with with all the problems that i was chasing mm-hmm. before that so that way i think when i when i look back and see what that one virtual summit has done for my business is incredible i mean it's it's just i mean i mean i think that the biggest takeaway was that you don't have to really do something you don't have to move mountains to be successful you know if you do one thing right and do it you know with your 100% give your heart and soul in doing it the world will take a note i mean you mm-hmm. don't have to take up a project which will take you 3 years and at at that point you believe like i wasted all this time and uh, you know it it was not a success even even with a virtual summit which takes you based on the, the how big the summit you want to do it 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 only takes between 60 to 90 days i mean th- that's it so but but that one product that you are building can bring you tons of uh, people into your uh, email list it will open opportunities like um, you know becoming a joint venture partner with some of the speakers who are on on your summit they allow uh, opportunities to sign up as a high ticket uh, affiliate for their products it helps you um, you know sell and make tons of money from the ticket so there is so much that one virtual summit can do and mm-hmm. and and all of this aspect that i just talked about happened with that summit for me thank you actually i want to stay in this topic a little bit longer and uh, obviously you had uh, sales and marketing expertise so in a way for me that sounds that it makes it easier for you to facilitate to organize and facilitate a summit like that if i were to ask you so who do you think should consider doing a, a project like that organizing a virtual summit is there some characteristics some expertise or some niche that you need to have in order to do something that is uh, you know meaningful and uh, successful agi you, you have asked a really brilliant question so when i when i got into the world of entrepreneurship like i said i had 13 years of sales and exp, exp, sales and marketing experience but you would be surprised to know that none of that actually helped me none i mean see marketing in the corporate world is very different versus what you do in the world of entrepreneurship it here it's more about direct response right i mean you your your marketing strategies have to be very concise very crisp they have to uh, you know immediately uh, you know appeal to your customers it's it, it it it's not like how the corporate world promotes their products you know have beautiful advertisements around have hair, Hundred thousand holdings talking about their products. That kind of things doesn't work here, and because you don't come up with that kind of budgets in the first place. So when when I got into it, and that's probably the reason why I didn't really got the kind of start that I wanted, because I was trying to implement those marketing strategies in the world of entrepreneurship, and uh, there was no alignment as it is. So for doing a virtual summit that I did. i actually started off with zero marketing skills literally zero marketing skills because right. whatever i knew had absolutely no use i mean it 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 came to me of no use so the only thing that i did was that i had myself been a participant in a few summits that i attended all thanks to the shiny objects again so 
what i just did was that i went back and with my little corporate experience that that helped me i went back and reverse engineered on what they would have done in the back end to to do this summit you you have to trust me when i say this no one told me how to do it i didn't even opt for a course i didn't read one article online about how to do virtual summits it was just purely my own uh, blueprint my own framework that i came up with so i i was like okay if these people are recording it that means this is probably on zoom so i have to record all my things on zoom so there is this website where people are talking about their offer that means i need something where i can have my web, web pages hosted which means i need a funnel builder so this is a copy so i need someone to write my copy or i should write my own copy there are images that means i need a graphics designer there are videos that means i need a video editor there are tech integration so if i can't figure it out myself i need someone who can do the payment integrations the email campaign integrations the zapier integrations and all so <laughs> i was looking precisely at each piece of what goes into the virtual summit made a list i still have the task list with me it's about 232 tasks that i started writing every single day based on what i was trying to do and then i would just start executing it so whether you are a marketer whether you are not a marketer whether you are a coach whether you are a course creator whether you are a freelancer a solopreneur it doesn't matter if you have a business if you have your niche very clear to you and you have a tribe that you want to serve you may not have one right now but you know who you want to serve what your niche is and you have a business idea that you believe can impact the world in its own little way if if that is what you are then you can do a virtual summit because virtual summit is that one tool on the internet right now which allows you to bring in the biggest influencers in your niche that way you leverage their experience and the the whole theme about doing virtual summits is you are basically solving one of the biggest problems in your niche and that is the reason why it is evergreen i mean a, any virtual summit today is done in such a way that it doesn't die out after the launch is done it is still evergreen because the problem statement that you have taken to launch your virtual summit is something which will work today which will work 5 years down the line as well for example if, if for the benefit of the audience um there is this summit called 30days.com by click funnels uh, that they did right so the topic the the co-founder of that company gave to 30 speakers who participated on that summit was if you wake up one one day morning and you realize that your business is completely wiped off your authority is wiped off no one knows you by your first name mm mm-hmm. how do you go about building your business in the next 30 days now i took that summit 2 years ago it was absolutely valid now in 2018 it is still valid in 2021 it will be valid in 2028 as well and that's how a virtual summit team has to be picked up i mean it has to be as much as evergreen as possible and also solving one of the biggest problems in your particular niche Mm-hmm. so that that is basically the premise of how uh, a virtual summit is done and again as i said if you are a business owner irrespective of the scale of the business that you have whether you are doing four figures five figures eight figures doesn't matter it's about leveraging the authority of the more influencer people who have in your niche bring them pick their brain pick up a topic which will help a, a huge audience in your niche and then you know you suddenly start being seen as an authority because you get to hang out with the biggest uh, influencers in your niche their authority passes on to you it's uh, you're so sure right about it i get it i understand what you mean uh, and you get all those uh, different points of view from uh, different experts uh, did you have any difficulties or challenges uh, you know inviting people there to 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 do the summit for you with you i mean or was it uh, people enjoyed it and uh, jumped in the opportunity that's what i thought what is going to be my biggest challenge when i thought about doing a summit 
eventually when i look looked at what all i did for my virtual summit and what was the easiest thing that happened it was actually inviting hmm. the speakers sure because yeah there were challenges uh, as such uh, you know one of the things that you should always remember is that you are trying to bring in more people who are authority in terms of the level that you are in your business right now yes. so there will be those challenges of people not showing up maybe they would postpone they would cancel it there are you know so those kind of things did happen in my case uh, multiple times but when i look back in terms of what were the biggest challenges my challenges were more in terms of uh, integrating payment payment gateways to my funnel getting the right copy written out um you know because when i was doing this summit from india taking international transactions was the biggest hurdle that i had to cross for any for anyone who knows how much time it takes for integrating stripe or paypal to your funnel it should hardly take about 10 to 15 minutes bring those apis from your account and put it in in the apis that gives that funnel builder gives you that's it it took me 45 days okay that is because of different laws here and yeah. i had to i had to float a company for that stripe would not give me a a business account on my individual name so i had to go for a business account then that has to go into a corporate account for that there is another thing there is another part of the fun isn't it a part of the fun of being an entrepreneur i i i enjoy it discoveries but, yes <laughs> but as the the biggest hurdle was all of this thing was happening right at the middle of the pandemic mm. everything was shut down i had to really figure out ways it would have been a different thing when the world was open like like what it is right now versus everything is you can't you can't even go in person to something to apply you know everything is online and people were trying to transition systems from offline to online you know so a lot of things were not possible even with the kind of technology we have right now so yeah i initially thought getting speakers would be my biggest challenge but it was actually not they in fact loved the kind of mission that i was mm-hmm. uh, you know doing this summit for because these are all heart centered uh, entrepreneurs that i i had on my summit they knew what i was trying to do you know trying to help their bit by coming and sharing the value what is working for their business how are they getting tons of organic traffic to their funnels to their websites so that way their business is still intact and they are not spending a lot of money on paid ads which was not a luxury for people even who had some really big uh, numbers for their business mm-hmm. to spend tons of money on facebook google and all that kind of paid ad uh, strategies so they really loved the mission and that's the, in fact i had about 40 people 41 speakers agreed to come on my summit a few had to drop out for different reasons but it ended up becoming a 35 people summit mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. uh, they really loved what i was doing and uh, wanted to jump on and uh, contribute sure. their share of sure. the value as well vamsh let me ask you one more uh, thing about uh, and i actually go a little bit further back to to that because i was ri- uh, reading in your story that you had five failed attempts in the beginning of building a business so Can you share what's the biggest lesson that you've learned after all these failed attempts, you know, one after the other? What what did you learn that uh, maybe someone can avoid doing? I mean, uh today I'm an advocate of focusing on one thing. Mm-hmm. Just one thing. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the result is going to be a success or failure. If it's a success, it will get you the money the fame the name the authority the brand whatever you have been looking for if it's a failure it is giving you the the biggest and the best gift that you can have as an entrepreneur experience right so focus on one thing is is one aspect of it it's like it's like this one coin that i have right now one side of it is focus do one thing don't worry about 100 other shiny objects that is chasing you to get their share of uh the, you are um, you know conscious into it the other side of the coin is be consistent with what you are doing that mm-hmm. one focus needs to be very consistent i mean whether it is about showing up on 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 your facebook lives if if that's what you want to do if you are 
if you promise to come up with one youtube video every single week it's about one blog post that you want to write for every couple of weeks it's about two tiktok videos that you want to do for your channel whatever you decide when you decide be consistent with that because as i mentioned you might feel like oh i i have uploaded this video and i got only 15 views but a lot of people who are not engaging with your content are still making make taking a note of what you are doing and i only realized this when i did the outreach for my summit when i started reaching out to people he say i said hey i'm a, a, a my name is vamsi pannala i'm a marketer from india uh, i'm doing this virtual summit called the impact marketing summit and uh, uh, this is for people who are trying to get some direction in what they are doing right now would it be possible for you to come on and spend 30 minutes of your time telling what is working for your business right now so they can take a thing or two and uh, implement that in their business is this something that you are interested and open to doing this is the message that i have sent mm-hmm. the reply was hey vamsi you know i know you have been doing these lives for the last 5 6 months i i did watch them you are doing an excellent job i love what you are doing let me know when 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 is the summit when am i expected to come and that message was common across almost 10 to 15 of the 35 people who appeared i never had an interaction they were still friends you know like like a linkedin open networker i was a facebook open networker yeah so i was friends with them but we never interacted but when i started sending them the messages they said hey you know what you're not a stranger i know you i saw your lives i i saw your content i did not engage it with with your content that's a different story but i know what you have been doing so that was like a biggest uh, you know eye opener for me people mm-hmm. do take note of it don't think that if they if they didn't like or if they didn't comment on your post it's not it's not that it's it's not getting its engagement some people may decide not to but they are still taking a note of it 100% i agree with you very much um, and cons- consistency and keep on doing it uh, regardless of the the results or the lack of apparent results that you might have at that time is uh, is very important and i think that message everyone that works or wants to do a business they have to really tattoo that or something like that keep keep going because Absolutely. we have to um vamsi i want to uh, also ask you some uh, quick fire questions to start wrapping, wrapping things up so the first one i want to ask you is what does personal development mean to you I mean, personal development uh, is is everything to me, right? So, who would come and uh, give you an education? It's it's you who it has to start with, right? I mean, there's no one would come and tell you, hey, you have to go through some personal development to become a better human. It's you who who has to realize the fact that if I am not investing on my own self, mm-hmm. there is no one who is going to help me do that. So, and that that's probably one of the biggest things that really helped me become what I am today in my business. I read a lot of books. uh whether it is to do with self help personal development of uh, the niche that i represent marketing you know all, all of this kind of rewires the the thought process mm-hmm. it changes the way you see the world so i think personal development is 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 a huge factor in uh, i think anyone who is successful today if you ask them what is the one of the top 3 factors personal development should be among one of them for sure mm-hmm. and Let's say you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self. What's uh, what advice would you give him? Same thing. I mean, focus on one thing. Exactly know who you are trying to serve. What is the niche that you want to be in, and just go all in. If if I would have done the same thing 18 years ago when I when I was 18, maybe I would have had a seven-figure, eight-figure business by now. Mm. <laughs> that's how life is isn't it we learn by what we do and what we don't do and then we Absolutely. reflect back on it and and more than the seven eight figure business maybe now my mission has been about helping thousand entrepreneurs transition from that expert to authority and you know, help them come out of that zone of you know hustling even if they are an entrepreneur they are still doing that nine to five not many people would admit that you know more more than yeah. nine to five actually actually right so <laughs> they 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 are still doing that hustle they can't go they, they can't go back from go go from their business for like couple of weeks and come back to and expect it to be in the same position as it was mm-hmm. so i would have if if i if i would have 
doing the same thing from my 18s maybe i would have at least served more than 10000 entrepreneurs by now and that would have been a huge contribution to the world from 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 my end you know so but yeah i mean there's 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 nothing like it's late the 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 last uh, the 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 good time to plant a tree in chinese proverb was like 200 years ago the next good time was yesterday right or or even today so there's 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 no right or wrong time you start it but you yeah. take it consistently from there is the most important thing Tell me one more thing. If you could uh, wave a magic wand and change something in the world uh, as it is today, what would you change? Limiting beliefs. I mean, I I have seen. In fact, I personally has gone through that when things were not really working out the way I expected it to be. I had a lot of limiting belief issue, and and very similar trait to limiting belief is the imposter syndrome, right? I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know. if if i am made to do this i don't know if people will listen if i put up a course i don't know if people will come if i do the summit the the guy is living in that i don't know i don't know i don't know right i mean you would only know if you go put in that work and see what the world is opening it up to you know so it's important that you give it an action like i said go and do that dream project that you have there will be only two outcomes one outcome is it's a super success it will give you everything that you have imagined everything that you dreamed of if it is not the only thing it will give you is the best experience of doing what you have done mm-hmm. so you can tweak it make it better if you believe it this couple of things would have made it a different thing that is experience you would not get all of that without even trying it so mm-hmm. everyone should go and do what they have been you know dreaming about doing for that matter Actually, that's uh, in a way you answer my next question. But uh, feel free to give something else if you feel like it is uh, necessary. I would about to ask you, give to the listener uh, emerging from all this conversation we had one actionable item, something they can do straight away or tomorrow morning, and uh, you know shift the, the, their life a little bit. almost oh one of the things that i i urge people if, if in 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 fact if i can say i plead people to do is go out and start publishing doesn't mm-hmm. matter mm-hmm. if it is a youtube channel doesn't matter if it's a podcast like this doesn't matter if it's tiktok doesn't matter if it's a blog post doesn't matter if it's facebook lives but show up every single day i mean if you are an introvert do a podcast or write a blog i mean which is specific to your own industry if you can be a, a a monkey in the in the front of a camera go and do tiktok i mean you you could go and uh, do a youtube channel you could do your facebook lives i mean when i say monkey it's not literally a monkey but <laughs> people expect you to be a very different person on video versus a very different person on um, you know a blog post right i mean there are two different uh, sides of it so it's it's all about the kind of personality you are if you are an extrovert think of coming up on camera start talking to it make it your best friend it will take you to a different level if if camera is not something that you are very friendly with make make a, a wordpress blog it doesn't cost you too much maybe about 50 60 dollars to start a wordpress site go express yourself write whatever you want to and i said like i said the world will take a note don't worry about it be consistent do what you are really good with don't have that limiting belief don't worry about the imposter syndrome there are people who still wants to consume from you the content that you are putting out because maybe you are your choice of words the way you express it the way you communicate is probably better than the content which is already there in the similar lines which has put up by someone else mm-hmm. so it's it's all about how you go about publishing showing up you know pick up pick a medium at some point you can repurpose the content for example this video can go into youtube the audio can go into podcast it can be transcribed into a blog post you could do 100 things with this one video that we are recording right but you if you if you don't have the bandwidth to do it don't worry about it you don't have to stress yourself but take one platform go publish consistently every single day and uh, you will have a different world 
for your own self and your business will be at a different pedestal. It's fantastic. Thank you. And Vamsi, how can people uh, connect with you and find out more? I'm Vamsi Panala everywhere. Um, uh, my my Facebook profile is Vamsi K Panala. My Facebook page is Vamsi Panala page. I have a group uh, called Authority Entrepreneurs, which is my brand right now. So that's where all the magic happens. So people can come and join that Facebook group. And my Insta handle is again Vamsi Panala. My Twitter handle is Vamsi Panala. I'm, as like mentioned, Vamsi Panala everywhere. Even the LinkedIn handle is Vamsi Panala as well. Um, the new the new bad boy on the market um, clubhouse that that's that's the same handle on clubhouse as well so you could go and follow me everywhere um, where you feel like you want to consume my content but my content goes on all these platforms so yeah that's fantastic i want to to thank you very much for this uh, conversation and there were some uh, i believe invaluable apart from information for sure but i think there was some items of value for the listeners so thank you very much for that and uh, all the very best with your mission to empower the entrepreneurs Um, any last parting words no i mean um, doesn't matter what you are doing where you are uh, in your life right now just be consistent with what you are doing the success will come so don't quit Um, you know entrepreneurship is, is is a hardship that's what you have signed up for but it's 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 a uh, it's the only way to be successful in this world is to show up consistently and uh, and just be there for your tribe and uh, they will they will take you to the level to the to the to the next uh, milestone in your business wherever you want to go thank you for listening if you enjoyed it please subscribe and rate personal development mastery on apple podcasts and also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it if you want to become part of an exclusive community gain access to unique content and at the same time support this podcast then become my patron the link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group, Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdm group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 